Praise the Lord, uh, people of God. Uh, I am coming to you uh, tonight. My name is uh, Pastor Mark White. Uh, it's been a little while. Uh, and uh, did say that we were coming back. Um, what we have now is called the fishermen, Fisherman's Take. And the Fisherman's Take is a contribution uh, to uh, my, my dad, uh, the late, great Seabron, Seabron, um, Pastor Seaborn White, um, who has went home to be with the Lord and uh, uh, left me to fill the big shoes that he had. Uh, they are some big shoes, but God is able. Um, but uh, we come to you um, to talk to you tonight um, from the fisherman's take, and you will see the fisherman's take as a contribution to my father's legacy. One thing about him is he loved fishing. Uh, he loved to talk about fishing. He loved to uh, fish. Uh, he loved to eat fish sandwiches. And uh, in that, uh, he knew how to engage conversation um, to get you uh, so he could then now um, talk to you about whatever. Uh, but you, the conversation usually ended up about Christ. He was a fisherman of souls. So this, the fisherman's take, is a, a contribution to my father's legacy and his wisdom. Uh, tonight, I just come to talk to you about uh, the wisdom of witness on social media, um, because most of our churches are upset because of the pandemic. And some of us have went back. God bless you. Um, if the Lord has told you to go back, we continue to pray for you. Uh, we have not heard that from the Lord um, at Zion. And so um, <clears throat> we won't criticize anyone, uh, especially the church. We don't uh, uh, we don't persecute the church. The devil don't need any help doing that. He don't need uh, any of the preachers to help him to persecute the church. He knows how to do it himself. Um, so we pray for the church, the body of Christ, the people of God. And so tonight I just come to share some things, some material that God has shared with me and uh, for the fishermen. The fishermen are the ones that um, that seek to uh, win souls and um, do it on social media now that the church is, is shut. And there's some warnings that God has given us that we have to be careful of uh, when we're engaging on social media. Social media <clears throat> is a good, good thing. It's a uh, it's a good tool of ministry if it is used in, in its appropriated places. Uh, we have to use the wisdom of God um, when uh, engaging in witness on social media. We must use wisdom. Um, and that's what God is. The seven spirits of God, we must rest on them. And the first spirit of God is wisdom. It is out of the seven spirits is wisdom understanding, there's counsel, there's power, there is knowledge, and the spirit of reverence. And the Bible says in Revelation 1.13, and in the midst of the candlestick, uh, there was one like the Son of Man, and that was Jesus, uh, who is the Holy One, governing. Uh, when he walked on this face of the earth, the seven spirits rested on Messiah, uh, so as we engage, uh, we must pray and uh, ask that the Spirit of God would rest on us as we um, enter into uh, witnessing on social media. Uh, the first thing that God had shared with me about, if you notice that social media is flooded with much conversation, much debate. Uh, on the fisherman's take, we won't be here to debate. Uh, about face masks and about social distance. Those are public ser service things that we know um, that work, but we'll leave that to the scientists 
uh, to do it. Amen. You don't want a scientist cooking your food. You want uh, somebody who is in culinary uh, and they have studied into culinary to cook your food or is a good cook. Amen. Uh, but we leave the science for the scientists. Uh, and so uh, I don't I don't uh, think that debating about a face mask is a mature uh, debate for me. I, it's, it's elementary to me, uh, but we'll leave that where it is. But we come to talk to the fishermen about witnessing on social media the things that are being carefully uh, done and must be done with wisdom. Uh, one of the things that the Lord was sharing me with me about uh, entering into conversations, disputes uh, on social uh, media is that we must be careful how we enter into different discussions, that the message of the gospel not be hid, that it not be marred, uh, that it not be muddled, uh, that it, it not uh, be confusing. The message of the gospel is a message of love, a message of, of reconciliation, a message of peace. Uh, and so um, when we are um, entering in uh, to uh, these conversations, we have to be careful. Uh, because the enemy uses uh, things in the social media um, to uh, confuse um, um, the the conversation. Let me give you a, a for instance. I was uh, context is important. Um, I would happen to be ministering, and I said to uh, the people of God, I said, "We cannot put God in a box." Now, this is the context by which I was talking about. <clears throat> I said that we cannot put God in a box. We must allow God to be God. And what happens is, I said in the midst of that, I said, if God tells you uh, to take the shot, would you take it? I didn't say that I was supporting or doing the vaccine or anything of that nation. What I was saying, if God told you to do it, would you do it? And what happened is people will snatch that little part of the conversation out and extract that out and say, this is what he's for. And so we have to be so careful not to enter into these debates so that the, the message of the gospel must be clear. Hear me, fishermen, not just men, but women, that that fishermen in context uh, would be women and men. So fisher women, fisher men. But be careful in your witness that the uh, you don't enter into some of these things, these quarrels. And let me share with you what um, um, Paul shared with uh, in the uh, pastoral epistles um, to uh, Timotheus and Titus. In 2 Timothy 2.13, uh, let me turn there and just share this with you quickly concerning different conversations and disputes you may enter into. You have to be careful. Here is what <clears throat> Paul tells Timothy and Titus in, uh, in 2 Timothy 2 and, and 23. He says, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of God, you and I, the fishermen, must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, apt to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance. So uh, the thing about um, entering into these different disputes, uh, they're fruitless, um, you, I find people uh, even, uh, and they have meant good things. You, you can see that the message uh, of God is there, but then it goes off into uh, some conversations concerning politics. Here is the thing, people of God. The church or the people of God, the kingdom of God has a culture of its own. 
we cannot allow the politics of the world to come into the church and change. I'm not talking about the church as of the building so much, but the church, the temple of the living God, the word of God. We cannot allow uh, these disputes to come in and divide. The enemy's job, his, 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 his whole objective is to turn me and you against one another, to turn you against your brother and your sister. And he'll use it in disputes uh, concerning worldly things. The wisdom of this world is foolish to God. These things, uh, all of these different debates and all of these uh, theories and all of, of these conspiratorial uh, thoughts, uh, that is, it has nothing to do with the soul. Here on The Fishermen, we are reaching for souls. People are out here dying. 130,000 are dead today. Uh, we are praying day in, day out. The message of the gospel must be clear, people of God. It cannot go into uh, uh, politics. Uh, notice how the church now is being divided. Uh, you hear they have white evangelicals. This is this is what they're saying. Uh, black evangelicals. When does the church, uh, when does God's church be divided? Uh, uh, the, the, the body of Christ is one and we must speak one voice. But when we enter into some of these conversations and theories, we open ourselves up to disputes. And what does Paul say about these quarrels and disputes? He says to avoid them. Why? Because of what they breed. They breed strife. And the people of God, we don't breed. We don't go in strife. We don't come in anger. They breed conversations that get us anger. Uh, one believes, uh, one side believes that you shouldn't wear a mask. The other side believes that you shouldn't wear a mask. Somebody be and they believes this and that. But those are left for the politicians, leave that for them to debate. But we're going after the soul. It, tonight, I am giving a warning to the fishermen, those that are out here to win souls on social media and to use the wisdom to be careful when doing it. Now, these empty debates, we must realize that they don't breed anything but strife. We must uh, be loving to one another. We must be kind to one another. We must be patient with one another. Uh, those are the attributes of God. People need to hear the message of the gospel, the message that there is hope. The message, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. You could be on a ventilator and pass through this life and move on to a, and to life abundantly because you have received the gospel. The, the gospel must be preached even with all of this death around. The gospel is a gospel of life, eternal life. The life, the burial, and the resurrection. Finally, the resurrection is final, which means that victory belongs to God. And that death has no sting over us and it has no control of who we are. So we must be careful in what we are engaging in on social media for the fishermen. Um, and so all uh, the other thing is uh, the division. Um, there is an old adage of the enemy that he uses and it is to defeat them, uh, you must distract them. And so the enemy constantly uses devices and weapons. What is his devices? Because Paul tells us that we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. What can be a device? Media is a device of the enemy. So when we engage, I'm not saying not to engage on social media, not to get on social media, but we must be uh, alert that he can use it as a weapon 
a device to divide you and your brother and sisters. That is what we have to, when I get on social media, and I warn you, uh, people of God, when you get on to social media, pray before you get on. Ask God to give you the wisdom on what to comment on, what to engage in. Uh, but for those that are winning souls and out here to preach the message of the gospel, please make sure that the gospel is clear. It must be clear. It cannot be muddled. It, it, it cannot uh, be caught in your anger and discussions. Uh, the word of God and the principles of God, uh, they're not to be debated. Uh, they're not to be on social media where you get into it with your brother and sister and then uh, you're all blown up and there's no unity. The gospel is a message of unity. So the warnings um, that God had given was, um, he said that the Lord, that the enemy, uh, this is what the Lord was telling me, that the enemy is trying to use um, a confusion of language. Um, if we remember um, in the Bible where um, God confused the languages of the people, the enemy is attempting to confuse the language of the people. And how does he does that? He gets us to engage in different conversations that are fruitless. Uh, what do I mean by fruitless? If the conversation leads to some type of positivity, uh, leads to Christ, uh, leads to love and peace, those are good things. And God says to think on these things. So uh, when we engage, we must understand and have spiritual awareness. Notice the Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 12, he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, these are the things that we wrestle against. And no matter what we come down to, we always have to turn back to deal with the spiritual problems. We can engage people all day. You can get mad at what they said. You can get mad at their behaviors. Uh, people are doing all types of things. But the Bible calls us to be focused. It says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So don't place your anger at your brother or your sister or at the young man or the older man or the sister here or the older sister there. No, place your fight with the enemy. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood. I know that police brutality is wide. Yes, I know. I'm not in it to, to enter into that, but it is governed by spiritual wickedness. All any oppression of the people is governed by a spirit. There is a spirit of brutality that is over America and has been over America for years and years. The one thing uh, that Mer America is now doing is a reckoning with the history. Um, their history that they have taught us has been false. Uh, it was false from the beginning and it is still false today. And so they have to face up to it. Most of the time when uh, people don't want to face their history um, because they don't want to say, I owe you or I uh, owe you an apology or to fess up to it. Um, but in God, uh, the gospel is a gospel of reconciliation. It's a gospel of peace where we can have a conversation and you say you did me wrong. And I say, amen, well, forgive me. Uh, we are never too big to uh, apologize. We are never too big to forgive. We're never too big and, and, and too highly to love those that even that hate and persecute us. We pray for them. That is the message of the gospel. And when we're out here on social media, Fishermen, I tell you today, all I ask, please be careful. 
Please be careful not to enter into things and debates that are fruitless. We must preach the gospel of peace. Uh, there's people that out here that want to know, uh, I have a savior. How did he become my savior? How do I uh, get to salvation? Salvation comes through a belief. A belief that Jesus died, uh, that he rose for you and me. Um, and the chastisement of not his, uh, but our peace was upon him. He didn't die uh, for his sins. I know that they crucified him and said it was for his uh, uh, sins, but no, he did not uh, die for his own sins. He had no sin, but he died for us. He took upon him our mess, our uh, efficiencies, our uh, uh, lack ofs, our uh, addictions, everything that we have ever done in the sight of God that is wrong, Jesus laid that on himself. And he gave his life. They didn't take it. He said, I lay it down. I give it to you. Why? Because he wanted to reconcile you and me back to him through the blood sacrifice. A blood sacrifice had to be made for us to reconcile back to God. And he was that perfect sacrifice. And when he rose again, he went up and he set on the right hand of his father and entered back into the rest. I encourage you today, fishermen in the land, people of God, uh, there is rest in God. Even in a pandemic, there is rest in Christ. Even when uh, you can see disease and uh, uh, hindering the schools, hindering our jobs, there is a rest. There's a rest that you can enter in. The Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. I tell you every day I get up trying to get to that secret place to never leave it. It is a place where God is in his presence and allows you to come into a place of peace. But your rest is uh, that your soul is protected in God, that you will live on forever with him. So we must be careful. We must be wise on social media, not to get into debates that don't seem to mean much of anything, but go after the soul. It's so many souls, people of God. It's so many people out here looking for help, looking for hope looking for love, looking for somebody that, that'll say, yes, I understand. Yes, I remember being addicted to marijuana. Yes, I remember being addicted to crack. Yes, I remember uh, being a whoremonger. Yes, I remember. But God is able to deliver you out of each and every bondage that you have. That is the message of this gospel. And it cannot be caught up into politics. It cannot, it should not. Uh, uh, be caught up into whether you wear a mask or whether you don't wear a mask, uh, whether you practice social distancing or that you don't practice this. The gospel is not Republican nor Democrat nor independent. The gospel, is it belongs to God. It is the power of God unto salvation. And I'm here to tell you as a pastor, as a fisherman, as a brother, as a sister, as a father, uh, as a grandson, as an uncle, to tell you today that God is calling your name. God is reaching out for you. He is, uh, he is the bait for the fisherman. He is that thing on the, on, on the pole that gets you to bite. And when that life that he can give to you, I promise you, I come from uh, a, a, a household of faith. Uh, my dad and mom, they raised us uh, in the gospel and I took off and went the wrong way. And uh, those of you that know me, I mean, I went way wrong way. But I'm here to as a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ that God can revive you, that God can rescue you, that God can pick you up. He brought me out of the prisons into a marvelous light. 
I'm not, I did do time, but time for me didn't start when I was in prison. Uh, time started when I was uh, in the world. I was imprisoned in my mind. Uh, so when I got in prison, when I got locked up, I think I began to be more free than I was when I was free uh, on the streets. But in there, God, I was isolated and God began to have a conversation with me. And he showed me that he had so much for, more for me than I even thought for myself. And the same thing, the same promises that he gave to me, life, eternal life, he has that for you. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you have done, I don't care what you've done. You can call on God today and say, Father, your way, your will not my will. Let your will be done in your life. And God will pick you up. He'll turn you around and he'll place your feet, as we say in the church, on solid ground. And it is true because God is that kind of God. So uh, I here today, we just here to come to tell you uh, just for a few minutes to share with you today uh, some of the dangers uh, that the people of God can get in to on social media. Uh, I didn't come to preach a big, large message. I just came to give a warning and love to those that love to fish for the soul. That was my father's, uh, that was his heart. He was, he went after the soul. He, he, he went fishing for the souls. And that is what we have to do, fishermen, fisherwomen, those that minister and get on Facebook. If you have followers, I congratulate you. My God, if you have thousands, hundreds, uh, how many ever you have, but don't lead them into debates. Don't lead them into fruitless debates. Lead them to God. Give the, uh, lead, uh, 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 direct him uh, to the gospel uh, that is a loving gospel, an acceptance gospel, a gospel that forgives, a gospel that touches and changes. Uh, it'll change you, I promise you, because it changed me. And God is not done with me. He's in the process of life, he continues to cut away and cut away the things and parts that is not like him. We live a life of holiness through him. Our God is holy. And the other thing is God is alive. He is truly alive. And how do I know he's alive in me? He's alive speaking to you. The Bible says that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit in Job, the book of Job. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and the young men shall dream dreams and the old men visions. Today, God is going to visit you guys. Today, because of the wisdom of the word of God, uh, it is in this season, God is going to pour out his spirit and begin to show visions and revelations. Uh, some of you don't know uh, what is the next uh, place where your business should go. God will give you a vision. Uh, where, where, where should I uh, land? Where should I go? You, you must have a shepherd. People of God, no matter where you are, hear me. You must have a shepherd, a pastor. Find you a good pastor. You cannot be out here isolated. No, no. That's a trick of the enemy. The enemy is the one that divides. And when he divides you, He'll isolate you so he can conquer you. That is the thing about being bewitched. A person that is bewitched, they don't even know that they've been bewitched. But you can see the, the, the movement of isolation away. And it's a dangerous time to be without a covering. It's a dangerous time. I, I, I am not talking to you guys about uh, uh, that you need to be under Pastor Mark. What I'm telling you is you need a pastor. Uh, I am an available pastor. Zion worship is always open for whosoever will let them come. But it is dangerous to be out in this uh, society, in this world without pastoral covering. 
There is plenty of good pastors out here. When you're out here, please, please remain in truth. Remain in the truth. When you get on social media, don't preach anything but truth. Because that will affect your ministry. When you engage in different conversations and disputes, that will affect your ministry. That will affect your witness, should I say. And that's, that's what the fishermen cannot do. When you're out here fishing for the souls, you must stay balanced. You must stay grounded on the word of God. Not into debates that are fruitless. No, no. No, no. Why should I argue with you about a worldly debate when our souls are lying at hand? I'm out to win the soul. And I come on here tonight to plead with the fishermen to give those. And, and so those that are just warning you, uh, joining us, God bless you. Um, what we're talking about today is the fishermen. Uh, on the fisherman's take is about uh, the fisherman is the witness and how we have to be careful how we engage in certain things, uh, in certain conversations. I'm not saying not to engage. What I'm asking you to do as ministers, as preachers, use the wisdom of God. Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I engage in? The Holy Spirit will tell you, no, that's, that's, not, that's not for you. No, that's not safe. No, that's that could lead to something different. So you have to be uh, in tune with the voice of God to hear him. Um, stay under your covering. Um, be, be safe. Um, um, continue in your witness, in your word. Stay grounded in your word. And remember that God is able and he will keep you. So the warning to the people of God, these conversations and debates, uh, you know, for me, they're fruitless. I, um, I, I, I want the soul. I'm going after the soul. There's so many people out here that need God, that need, a, that need to hear the gospel. And the gospel is not something that is recognized. It is revealed. And when we preach it, without it being marred and without us being um, uh, confused in our language, entering into debates, but we preach Christ and him crucified. And the life, the life that we live, we live it in him. We live it in him. I invite you uh, to give your life to Christ. All my friends and family and people that join us over Facebook, I, I didn't come to, uh, in, in astounding words of, of man's wisdom uh, and all, and, and that I just came today to say God is able to keep you. And I know it's, it's, it's been rough. I know it seemed like it's been a lifetime, but God is doing some changing in us. There is nothing uh, in doubt about this pandemic that this is not of God. And I know that the debates are going uh, on about uh, who spread it, the virus, who created the virus. Uh, there is but one creator. And the Bible says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There's nothing that enters in that God does not allow. Uh, but we know it's of God because it hit all around the earth. The church doors have been closed. Ministries have been uh, just totally uh, not torn apart, but they've been put in a place where now we must live by, the just shall live by faith. We must pray. We must get guidance in everything that we do. Uh, so in this time, just know this is not uh, something that somebody is in charge of. God is fully in charge. And he's trying to call you and I to him. He's trying to get us to, to look at our, our thoughts, consider our ways. We are, How many times have we tried to figure out God? He says in Isaiah, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts 
and my ways are not your ways. As high as the heavens is from the earth, are his ways from his from our ways. So we must, we must acknowledge God's thoughts. How do we do that? We stay in his word. How do we must change our ways to his ways? How do we do that? We give up our will, not my will, but God's will. And so please, my, 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 my agenda tonight is to alert those that witness on Facebook, those uh, that engage in different things. There is wonderful people of God all around on social media doing awesome things. And I, I really congratulate. I love to see uh, the word of God being passed around. I love to see uh, people that getting in the word and winning souls. I love to see all the followers. And that is groovy. But when you have all of those followers, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. And Jesus gave the responsibility. He said, if you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. The followers that you have, feed them. But be careful what you feed them. Don't feed them disputes. Don't feed them garbage. Don't feed them stuff that'll lead them away from God. The only, only one that comes to divide is the enemy. And that's what the enemy is doing with, within social media. I'm not saying that social media is totally wrong. What I'm saying is you have to be, a, be, be careful and, be, and acknowledge what you're operating with or in because the enemy is fully incapacitated in social media. It's one of his devices. We ha cannot be ignorant of Satan devices. We cannot be. Whether it be government, whether it be music, whether it be social media, we cannot, we must be alert. We must stay alert. And people of God, protect the message of the gospel. Please protect. The only thing I'm here for tonight is to tell you to protect the message of the gospel. Our lives, we are the salt. If the gospel be hidden, it's hidden to them that have been blinded by the God of this world, the enemy. But God is a God of light. He's a God of promise and he is a God of love. He'll receive you in no matter where you are, what you're going through, no matter who broke your heart, no matter who walked on your heart, God will always be here for you always. And so you have to reach out to him. All you have to do is say, Lord, help me. Father, I open my heart today. Help me. I need you to deliver me from this drug. I need you to deliver me from this abusive relationship. I need you to deliver me from the persecution. I need you to deliver me. And when you call on the name of the Lord, he will come. He will answer. So please, people of God, remember the message of the gospel. It is a message of love and of hope. And even in this pandemic, God is right in it with us. He's carrying you through. He's cutting away. The potter is forming the clay. And in that formation, the process can be tough for the clay. The burning, the padding, the spinning. All of the process that the clay goes through and the potter is steady forming. Can the clay tell the potter that this is enough? Or I'm, I'm as fine as you're going to make me? No, no. The potter, it is his professional. It is in him to make the clay as he needs it to be. We are God's salt in this earth. We cannot lose our savor. If the message of the gospel 
is lost, then the salt has no savior. The salt is the gospel in this earth and it cannot be confused. Don't let the enemy confuse you by telling you that Jesus didn't die for you. Yes, he died for you and me that you may have eternal life and to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Don't you fear death. Death has no sting. You must know that there's life in Christ. And if you give your life to Christ today, you'll enter into covenant relationship with God and you will no longer have to worry about death. Yeah, life gets hard sometimes, but he knows how to sustain you with his joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And when you get in a place where you feel bad and you're down, sick in your body, just call on the name of the Lord. I promise you he'll come. Trusting in all his ways. He's been good. The Bible says he's good to all. He's been good to you, good to me. And as long as I'm here, I will continue to fish for souls. And that is what's uh, uh, in um, the word of the mouth on the fisherman's take tonight. And I thank all of you that would take a look at this uh, material. It's just a short encouragement um, uh, that we continue in the ministry being careful of what we engage in because Paul said it to Timothy. He said, avoid foolish conversations and disputes for they lead to strife. We don't strive, people of God. No, no. We don't fall out with our brothers and sisters. No, no. We love them. Even when they go off, even when the Lord, uh, uh, they say that the Lord has taken them to another place, pray for them. Pray for them. This is a dangerous time. And also, please be careful. Be careful when we say, thus saith the Lord. When you say God said something, be careful. Please be careful. Because we don't want to become a false prophet. We don't want to say something that God did not say. Because when we say God said, trust me, we have to answer for that. Uh, we have to answer if it was right nor wrong. We have to answer if God says it, it shall come to pass. And God moves in a certain way. And so we cannot, uh, Jeremiah says, prophesy to the false prophet. Because they prophesy things that cannot be confirmed. And so when we say God said, be careful, be careful. Maybe you ought to use, I, I felt it in me to, to do it or to say it or to engage in it. But when you say God said it, please be careful, please. So the people of God on the fisherman's take, please tonight remember the message of the gospel using wisdom on how to engage Engage people, engage conversations. If they don't lead to fruitful conversation, then protect your ministry, protect the ministry of Christ, that they may know him by your love. Amen. God bless you all. And I, I really, uh, my Uncle Orville and uh, Overseer Joyce Thompson, Sister Hope, God bless you guys, my sons, and uh, those that will tap in and, and view this. God bless you. I just wanted to share just a little bit. I'm not a uh, big social media person, but I love to uh, preach the gospel and witness. I love to win souls. And on social media, there's a flood of souls. Uh, so I'm excited um, about your future. And what God is going to do. So uh, I encourage you and let me pray with you before we leave. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you've been good. Because 
you died for us, set us free for those that believe. And we believe today, God, send the vision and revelation to those that don't know, those that are inquiring of you, those that are looking for help in this time of trouble, those that are confused about where to go next, those, oh God, that have been calling on help from somewhere. God, reveal yourself to them today. Give them freedom in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. For, Lord, we know he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, set them free, God. Visit them in their dreams. Visit, visit them in their sleep. And allow them, oh God, to know who you are a personal savior that died for them and that will walk with them until the end of this age. And we thank you tonight. Now guard us and keep us in until the next time on the fisherman's tape. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, people of God. Be encouraged. Fishermen, fisherwomen, go for the souls. There is our harvest out there. Go get them. Be careful. Love you all.